Three, two, one. Oh, is it already recording? Yeah, you got uh, it. fuck off. Uh, all right, gamers, uh, we back at it again. Uh, we won another box. We're that good at the game. Uh, pull this shitty women, though, so fuck that. Uh, so we won with uh, Fujimi Fantasia Bunko, which is a set that I really like because it has a big lady. Bigger number, better card game. Let's get to it. Speaking of bigger numbers and better card games, you got four of a 4K oversizer with a shit tier character from my favorite show in the set. Uh, her downside is you have all your opponent's ca characters have pay two to Encore, which is negligible. No one's ever gonna pay that cost unless they're down tremendous. Uh, one of the actual good cards you run in this deck because we have to be somewhat competitive and fix for yellow is Frail Exorcist ha uh, Hanbe? Harambe? Yeah, Harambe. Uh, yeah. During your turn, uh, she is a global uh, 500 for everything. Is that straight list? Wow, that's straight list. Uh, so yeah, standard playable, standard all-star right here. Uh, also, when you play a Climax, she is an Amagi, but rather than paying one like most Amagis, she is clock yourself from the top deck. So you get some really good interactions because you are playing standby, so you can force yourself to other levels to play bigger bodies, which we'll get to later. Uh, for those that don't know, Amagi is top check four, grab level one or higher when you play a Climax. Continuing off to level zeros, and it's part of our small red fix, we have doo -doo -doo, Ungraspable Beauty Chizuru. Uh, on play, you surveil one, so top check, uh, leave it on top, put it in grave, really good for helping checking our triggers. And whenever you play a Climax, you can bounce her to hand, uh, give something one soul, helps us push damage because we're in a standby deck, so not a lot of our things push damage except for our level twos, and also allows us to have a full field for one of our early plays, and then bounce back to standby something without feeling too bad. And for our blue fix, we're running, uh, what's her face? Inherited Magic Talent Sistine. Uh, she is a vanilla Rize. Kinda cringe, honestly, but she's blue, and she does help us get through our deck a little bit, so we're okay with that. Uh, we run three Brainstormers of the red variety. Uh, Heikyu Academy Student Council President Karimu. Long ass name. Uh, she is a tap self salvage Brainstormer, and she also has a Climax combo with Standby that we're running two of for a surprise secret, which I'll tell you all about later. Uh, if you have this in play, you can pay one and stand by something else out, or not stand by, stand something. So, but by something else, it has to be a specific 2-1, or 2-2, which you do not run in the deck, but a very specific 1-1 one -one that we do run in the deck. Honestly, you're never going to use this ability. I actually just learned out you can stand the 1-1 one -one today. So, finish off our level zeros, we have two, uh, many different festivals uh you uh she's on death top check four for a yellow climax and discard a card mill the rest honestly mostly here just for an on death mill four because deck speed is pretty rough in this deck especially in standby when you just want to keep your big boy sorry big girls out and you don't really have a lot of tools outside of like brainstorming to mill on main phase so going into level one we have our four standby targets at one one uh, fragrance of Yuri Chizuru. Uh, she gets 500 for each of your characters on field, so she becomes a 7 5. And because she has that kind of weird condition, she always has hand encore. So it's not like something where you need X amount of characters to have hand encore. No, she's always going to have hand encore, even if there's nothing else on the field. Uh, this is our main standby target at level 0. Sometimes we'll play it from hand just because you don't have a lot of level 1s in this deck. Other level ones we have are the Quiet White Cat uh, Koneko. Uh, she's a level one lower bomb, and then on play you surveil one. So honestly, kind of just like a solid level one just to play from hand, just to get bodies on your field, and good top check for standby triggers or milling if you so desire. Uh, to protect our level ones and level twos and onward, we have two uh, Fury of Water Muse. Uh, she's a 2k backup. Nothing special, but she does her job, and that's what we like about her. Going on to level two, we get to best girl, uh, healthy outdoors, doorsy girl, uh, Tominori. Uh, let's get the shiny card on top because we're fancy like that. Uh, this is like the biggest body for 2-2 two -two in all of Weiss, so therefore the best. Because as we, as I said earlier, bigger number, better card. Uh, 
for each character in your back row, she gains 2-5. So she maxes herself at 11-5, which is stupid massive. And that's all you need, just like her. To protect her, we have one copy of a 2-1 uh, backup. Uh, messing around, Rumi and Sistine. Uh, the 2-5 backup. Uh, on play, give a character in battle plus 1k. So it's a 3-5 backup. Get your big things even bigger. Because if there's one thing this deck's really good at, it's being big. Ironically, speaking of things that are not big, uh, Kindness and Strength Rumia is our early play of choice. Uh, she has a full board early play, so again, helps you to field this, play this, bounce this to bring something else when you play a standby target. On play, you heal from memory, or you heal from clock to memory. So you normal like heal normal early play healers or just healers in general, you decompress yourself by putting a card from clock into waiting room. This just removes a card from the game, which is pretty nice. However, it can only hit characters, so if you have if you're like 2-1 and you have an event in clock, can't really do a whole lot. She also has a really funny on play effect. Uh, on play, pay one, pitch two, double something's power. Doesn't come up, but you could always pump this to be really funny. Continuing on with our level threes, you run three Girl of Healing Asia, who combos with a standby. Uh, her, her base effect is on play heal. She's a global 15, and she has a very unique climax combo as to where her climax combo, rather than being an auto ability, is continuous. So as long as you have first friend in your climax area, she gives an additional global 15. So you can play first friend, stand by, out, Asia, and then Asia is just continuously going to check as for first friend in the climax area. So she's going to dig an additional 1500 power from that, even if you stand by her out the turn with the standby. Now, for our ultra spicy Mimage, we have three uh, Sundere Magical Arms Girl Haruna. Uh, shit to your character. Favorite show, though, so I have to run it. Uh, she combos with two uh, a wind trigger, which you only run two of in the deck. This is our surprise secret that I was going to tell you all about later, why we only run two of this comp standby. Uh, she's an on-play stock healer, which is really nice. We don't really have a lot of healers in the deck besides these two. And she's also on attack if you have the wind combo in play. Uh, pay three, burn four, which kind of like helps a lot with this deck because if you stand by this out, stand by, you're not really, you're, I don't want to say you're hurting for hand, but you're not having as much hand as a 1k1 deck. So having a combo that's always just like pay three stock, which you're cheating stock by standbying it out, and you're cheating stock by keeping big girls on board and not having to play other things. So the stock kind of just like helps itself, and it's another and is main the reason and it's another big reason why we run the EU, because even though we only have two win climaxes, we can kind of just loop these girls by brainstorming a bunch of times until we eventually find a win climax. And then for our last three cards of the set, we run three no coming in between. Uh, it's a pretty spicy card. Uh, it's a level three four drop backup. Uh, give two of your opponent's characters right. Yeah, choose two characters of your opponents, and they get minus two soul till on the turn. This goes to memory. Uh, doesn't really matter, but at that point, you're at the end of the game, so the memory compression isn't like mandatory. It's more that, or mandatory. It's more so that you can't loot the card. Uh, does fall weak to things with hexproof, like AOT or stuff like that. Uh, all in all, this deck's really funny. What's funnier than eight standby, six standbys with two with two triggers that are anti synergistic? Because you have big bodies, so you don't really need to get over stuff. However, I love is this a zombie? So I had to shoehorn in a finisher. Uh, some spicy things you can do with the deck. Uh, again, standby this out. Cheats on half the cost for the pay three on attack. Uh, standby. Another spicy thing is you standby. Asia with first friend to get a global 3k because of her condition for a climax combo. Probably like the coolest thing you can do with the deck is if you're stuck at 1, 5, 1, 6, you can use, uh, you can play a climax, use a hand base effect first before you do the actual standby to clock yourself. And depending on how many hand base you have on field, you can clock yourself that many times to level yourself up to bring out 
your big shiny girl. Generally, you'll want to put it like in your front row. How I like to play this deck is that you'll kind of like force yourself to level one, stand by out at 11-5 in the front row, and now you just have a body that's going to stay there for like four or five turns. And it's just going to sit there, and it's going to look pretty and do fuck shit. That's pretty much the deck. I want to box with it. So that means it must be good, right? <laughs>